Welcome to Goosey Media. Grey Goose Design. What we're going to look at today is replacing the large, long ribbon cable that provides the signals to the Y axis in your K40. And it also takes the signals for the uh, limit switch. It looks a bit like this. And obviously in use, they do flex and can break. Or if you have a bit of a pyrotechnic adventure and they do burn. It's quite a straightforward process. Now the cable runs all the way from the connector on the gantry, round the machine into the electronics bay. And as anybody with a good sense of smell will notice, this particular machine has a mini Gerbil 3 in it, but the replacement process is similar for all boards. And this machine is, the, the board is actually on a piece of bubble wrap simply because this machine is a test bed. I would not recommend you do this at home. Okay, the first thing we'll do is unplug the ribbon cable. I would suggest that you make sure that the machine is powered off at the mains, just to save any embarrassment. Pull the carriage back, pop the cable out, and then it just pulls straight out. And then we take the new cable and there is a convenient slot to feed it down through. And you just wiggle it a little bit. Come on. Where have you gone? Doesn't want, this one doesn't want to wiggle the same. And there we go. Pops out the back end. Now connecting at this end, it's very good if you've got tiny little Korean hands. Mine don't work that way, but it goes in with the reinforcer at the top. And you get your hand in underneath. Hold the gantry with your right hand, which you won't be able to see because my great big head's in the way. And yes, it's fiddly. Ideally, if you uh, happen to have the chassis out of the case, this would be so much easier. But I've got this bolted in at the moment. I don't particularly want to unbolt it just for this. Come on, you know you want to. Just move my hand into a different position, as I just said to the bishop. And eventually, at some point, we will get it to feed into the connector like that. Oh. Having tried this by wiggling my hand underneath to get the cable in, hmm, it doesn't really work. So the easiest way is to just loosen the screws off On, that. on the limit switch and cable connect bracket. There we go. I didn't want to do, but I'm all 
ears and noses this afternoon. So, here's our new cable. And here is what we're connecting into. And as you can see, the connectors go at the top, the reinforcement at the bottom. So if you're doing this from while it's still in, remember, reinforcement goes at the bottom. Put our connector back on there. And we'll reattach the bracket onto the onto the mount using all the dexterity of a not right quite funny because when, when you get older you fingers seem to do all daft things they don't seem to go where you want which is a bit annoying but that's the price you pay we all get in there so that's all nice and tight all the connections made So we've got the cable connected. What we need to do is just check the travel. So this cable needs to just come through a little bit. Just check that we haven't got any interference with the limit switch. And that's that end done. Now connecting at the controller end is much simpler. We'll just note the orientation again from the connector so we need the protective strip at the back and we pop that in and you will notice on the mg the leds are lit and that's because it is being it's currently connected to the computer and then if we make sure the cable is free okay so we've got all the cable connected now turn the power on and we just need to do a bit of magic with the USB cable and there we go, it homes quite nicely. And if we rush to the computer, which has decided to go to sleep. And there we have it, cable replaced. If you like the video, please think of Hit in the describe button, ring the bell, and we'll see you in the next video.